how you going everyone, I'm Green Zero and welcome to week 2 of the patch 1.03 uh, development. We've got a few more games here to showcase today, let's quickly just pause it up here and we'll run through the players. I'll also run through the changes as we go through the matches. Remember it's not about winning here, it's about having a look how well the patch has developed and where, where it's come to. So we've got a Pip UIGI, UIG or something like that and I am Julian. So Blackhand versus GDI, there's been a bit of talk about Blackhand perhaps being a little bit too powerful or underpowered. No one can really put their finger on it whether or not they're, they're underpowered or overpowered, so we'll just uh, let that go at the moment. But Pimp is definitely playing as a, the black hand on here. We're on Rift. Um, should be an okay game. I mean, uh, Julon is from RA3, I'm pretty sure. So, uh, But he's still pretty good at Kane's Wrath. I mean, uh, with 1.03 here, we've seen um, 1.02 economy come back. So the refs will be 3,000. The harvesters will be 1,600. And that's very important. There was a lot of uh, public demand for 1.02 economy to come back. I think it was just a matter of time really before it did come back. And it looks like two engineers, two engineers here from Pim, and he's training a lot of scouts. Uh, the Confessor Cabals, I think they are a little bit cheaper, but they aren't as strong as they used to be. Single rifleman squad coming down here for Julian. He's going to take a garrison. That's going to stop this engineer if he gets there quicker, or unless Pim is going for a secret shrine, but he's not, so he won't be going for those. Uh, there's a black hand squads. He's actually dug in in the middle just to keep himself a, a nice line of sight there. That's good. So the economy is back to normal. A few uh, other changes here and there. It looks like Pip's going to make it to that building first. And uh, he's going to push Julian's scouts away. And he's not paying attention and he's going to pay. He's going to lose those scouts. He may be able to sneak away. Look at that. He definitely would have lost that 1.02, but the, the, the lower damage there has meant that he's got away. So that's made a difference straight away. I'm not sure if people are going to agree with that. Uh, I mean, it doesn't. We haven't really tested it, so anything, anything can happen. We can see Julian's actually left his foxhole in the middle, and he sent his scouts forward just to make sure there's no bikes. I mean, in 1.02, you really have to make sure there aren't any bikes coming. And you can see a harvester, and there is in fact another refinery on the build. Pimp can't really stop those uh, scouts at the moment. He did cancel his watchtower. But he's got a buggy coming out, so Julian might want to dig in again, although the re it probably hasn't recharged. He's just going to run around the refinery. That's good. He's going to get run over. No, he's not. He's okay. He's running around buildings, which is good. That's going to delay the death of these riflemen squad. And he can just see the second ref go up now. Uh, Julian's actually ahead. He's, he's placed his ref a bit sooner. He's got his uh, conyard on the move. He did build a predator tank, so he's obviously worried about bikes. I mean, it's still a good move. You can't really take chances against Black Hand. They're, they're very bike happy. And he's going to move his Konya to expand. Surveyors have gone up from $600 to now $1,000, but they don't appear to have lost their speed boost. So it's still beneficial to expand with them. I mean, it does cost $500. It's just a little bit risky, and I guess against Black Hand, he didn't want to take the chance. He wanted to move his Konya. He doesn't have that much money at the moment, so he doesn't need to actually build anything. And he's going to deploy there. He's probably going to go straight for a ref and get his economy up. I mean, again, the, the build order at the start has a... It's not as dynamic as it was in the 1.0 economy we had in the 1.03 patch before the updates. Um, there was a lot of different moves you could do like that, but now it's back to what it was before. And I think everyone's agreeing on that. I mean, it's been like that for so long that the community has accepted it. Um, you can still use uh, unique build orders. You just have to uh, work a little bit harder to get them to work. A few tanks there just uh, b blasting out those scouts. So GDI here. Um, silos did go up temporarily, but they're back down to 300, not that anyone really builds them except for Steel Talons with their time blocking. And some Scorp tanks coming out. Scorp tanks have been fixed. Uh, I believe they're back to their 1.02 status. Not quite sure on the, the, the actual statistics though, whether they have been tweaked a little bit, but they don't appear to be uh, as powerful as they were in, in the last update. They seem to have a lot of armor before. I don't think that was necessary, and neither did a lot of other people. And he's got, Julian's got dual war factory. He's got three harvesters. He must have moved one. He has moved one because he's only got four on his starting field. He used to have five, and he's pumping out dual predator tanks. Pimp does have an extra spike. Doesn't appear to be generating any money. Is he, he may be, uh, he may require silos. No, he's generating money now. Maybe it was a bug. I don't know. Maybe he let his money build up a little bit too much. But I doubt that. So dual pred tanks coming out. Julian might want to get AP ammo because he is against a black hand team. AP ammo has been nerfed for all factions. Uh, it's not, I mean, it used to be very powerful, but now it's actually quite a bit more in line with what it should be. It's not so devastating to those infantry heavy factions. But uh, I know uh, infantry factions like a Traveller have had their, their cultist armor 
uh, nerfed a little bit, but because of the AP ammo nerf, it doesn't make too much of a difference. A traveler will, will be really more focused on their mind control abilities, I think, now that they can't rely on their head squad. Epic, epic units still have their nerf. They're still not, they still take longer to build, they still cost more, they don't have as much health. They're more of a, you know, they're not a single unit army anymore, which is a real problem. And a compost up by Julian. Am I saying his name correctly? D U E L A N. I am Julian. There's a bit of a, a fad going around. People put I am in front of their name. I'm not sure what's what's with that. A lot of black hand coming out, and a scan goes down, so Julian's going to be able to see that imp spam, and he's getting the upgrades. Uh, black Disciples, $1,000, 30 seconds. That's still the same. Purifying Flame has come down. I'm pretty sure it was $3,000, but it's only 2000 now. Which does seem fair. I mean, no one really got it when they were played as Black Hand. They just tended to spam bikes and infantry. But he's got a lot of units here. He's definitely going for the Black Hand upgrade. Going to want to make those guys uh, super good. Uh, a few more scouts coming in by Julian. So no one really wanted him to commit here. I mean, it, Drift is a big map. Normally you'd want to see the Black Hand play and make a move. Either really early on in the game or in the mid game. Just do some harassment because the GDI player will get really strong. Uh, GDI is a brute force faction. So he will... Uh, build his strength if he's just left alone and shatter is coming out uh, Shatterers are a little bit better in 1.02. I'm not I can't remember what happened to them I just know that they're not too bad tech center as well by Julian He has already got AP ammo and a lot of APCs coming down But uh, as I said uh, What was I talking about shadows? That's right the zone shatterer from uh, Zocom is in line with the The GDI shatter uh, price wise they brought it down. I mean Zocom is a specialist faction They shouldn't have to pay more for their special their special shatterer it does have more range. Uh, it can be used as an artillery, apparently. I haven't seen that. But that's just the overload beam, I think. Which I don't actually mind. I think that's not bad. And a bunch of scorpion tanks with a lot of imp spam coming down here. So the Black Hand player's got a nicely sized diamond. There's even a flame tank in there. And you've got to watch out. Flame tanks are a little bit more resistant to cannon fire. It'll take uh, two or three more shots or something like that to kill it. And uh, they're not as... Uh, they're not bugged out with their, their shooting anymore. They'll shoot really fluently and they'll just drive past and flame down the building pretty quick. So um, they're really nice. You have to watch out for them. They're still as deadly as they... They're actually even more deadlier than they used to be. And there's a big army here. Have we got Orcas? No, we've got Firehawks. So this is what I was talking about. Pimp's just... Uh, he's held back and... Yeah, really... I mean, he's got an army. But uh, he's going to be in trouble because the, the GDI player is just getting so strong. He's not getting harassed. He's not losing harvesters. He's not being forced to maneuver around. And uh, yeah, Pimp, as, as a black hand, you really should go forward and attack early to mid game or do something because now he's got Firehawks. And those Firehawks are going to come around. We can see that, uh, judging by the radar, that Julian has harvested a lot more Tiberium, so he's going to be very powerful. Purifying Flame is upgraded. There's a flame tank moving around the top. That may have been the one from down here, but those scouts will see it. Those Firehawks are flying around. He's probably just waiting for a target. And a flame tank. He has to sell off his Reclamator Hub so that the GDI player going all the way to the top tier there, but he had to sell his uh, Reclamator Hub off, or maybe it was destroyed, I'm not sure. There's another flame tank there. And where are those Firehawks going? Oh, they're flying. Kind of got spliced a bit there. Screen AA hasn't been nerfed yet, so basically if you get in range of a Screen AA, it will kill your Firehawks. It will kill uh, two at once if they're close together, uh, which they usually are, like those two just there. And oh my god, like, he... Julian let that flame tank in, even though when he shot it over here, and he's gonna let that get into his base far out. That's not a good move at all. He's splitting his no, his firehawks are on the way back. They didn't appear to even bomb anything. The Texan is down, and heroic flame tank with purifying flame, and he drops far out. That was quick. He dropped that building in like a fraction of a second. Julian really wasting his firehawks. He they were out there for a long time. They didn't even drop their bombs, and now pimps coming in. Uh, obviously, this game, yeah, not. No, uh, the winner, winner, winner or loser doesn't really count. I mean, Pimp really. I would have expected Julian to win that. Maybe I don't know. His uh, RA3 experience is paying off uh, too much. He's got a big army here. He should be able to win this fight. He's got shadows. He's got AP ammo. Uh, going a little bit slow actually. Let's just zoom in a little bit. And yeah, he should win out. I mean, he's just got to clean his infantry up. And those shadows are making a real difference here. So that game there just came down to a, you know, a few flame tanks and then a massive battle at the end. And he's actually pushed them about. A lot of the, a lot of the black hand squads have actually survived. The black hand in the squad, so you can see them all there. Uh, Julian's going to want to chase them down. So yeah, black hand definitely should like attack and harass earlier on. He's got a lot of flame tanks coming out, so he's obviously trying something different. There's, there's like four or five of them there, but he can't go head to head with this this army. That purifying flame isn't going to destroy units very well. 
Oh, yeah, actually, they didn't do too badly, but they just don't have the armor to go in there. And look at that, Purifying Flame is very powerful. Far out, he's losing a lot of units here. That's actually quite surprising, he's being pushed back by, stealth, by uh, flame tanks there. Uh, maybe some air support, I mean there's a lot of black hand troopers left. Uh, Julian isn't, he probably doesn't have much in the way of reinforcements. He's moving his Conyard, but he doesn't have a lot of base left. It looks like some, looks like those Firehawks may have bombed his, uh, his construction yard, but he didn't quite have enough to take him down. They are flying around somewhere, and there is an Orca Strike on the way. Obviously, it's probably not going to be able to finish that off though. So Julian here didn't really didn't really seem to know what he was doing. Pim pushed a lot of flame tanks forward and, and showed just how powerful they are. I mean, I'm not sure if people are going to be crying over that or what, but uh, I mean, it wasn't too bad. Firehawks now, they did have a bomb nerf, but that's only because the fence has been nerfed for... Um, and look at that, he's bombing infantry that you know you're losing when you're starting to do that. The fire bombs are pretty good against infantry, they do do a little bit, but it's not preferable to do that. And that purifying flame flame tank is going for the war factory and he just drops it so fast. Yeah, again, like I was saying, firehawks have had a bomb nerf, but that's because the fences have been nerfed. And a uh, hard pointed uh, firehawks can actually destroy uh, a fenced building, like a tech center or a refinery. I, I can't remember how many bombs it is, but if you have four hard pointed, four hard point firehawks, you can drop a fence building now. So the bomb nerf is only just uh, to keep unhard pointed firehawks from destroying a fence building. So it's actually so firehawks are actually a little bit stronger now in the fact that they can uh, destroy uh, structures like that. And he's actually bombing his base pretty hardcore now. Maybe if Julian can just hold this, uh, this these units here, he'll be all right because he does have his conyard in the middle. He's got a structure ready to drop. He better be a refinery, and it is. He needs to move his harvesters there. He needs to get back. I think Pimp needs to make a move because he can't really. Uh, it doesn't appear. Oh no, he does have a war factory, but he's selling off like crazy just to get units out. I mean, if he drops these uh, these flame tanks, he can he can definitely definitely when he he should move his harvesters away. He needs to get his firehawks out of there too. Maybe pl quickly place a, an airfield up here before he loses his base because that black hand army is just going to go around. And the firehawks dropping their fire bombs. Oh, he actually does a really good job of spreading them all out, and that kills a lot of infantry. But uh, there's three flame tanks in here, and they're just going to go to town on this base here. Very powerful. Bring out the health bars. Let's have a look what happens. And far out, they got some range on them. Oh man, they just walked this base. Oh, and all the firehawks. Oh, you think he would have taken them off? He's got a heroic and an elite one there now. They're even destroying harvesters. And those infantry obviously don't stand a chance. And Julian has uh, been defeated. So interesting display there, especially with all the flame tanks. Uh, just I think you got to watch out for them in the new patch. They definitely are pretty deadly. Surprise, uh, Julian, seeing as he didn't get harassed or anything, couldn't really counter that. But yeah, Pimp really pushing over the top of him there. He needs some more anti-infantry, maybe snipers. I think snipers are going to be a bit more beneficial for the GDI teams now. They have a range increase, so it's definitely worth trying to get them. Uh, let's jump in and have a look at another one. Tournament decision, here you go. Again, guys, there's not there's a real shortage of replays. I'm really scrounging to find replays. No one's posting in the thread. Post replays in the thread, all right? Post them in there, and I will VOD them. As long as they they have to be semi good or at least good, because I've just got nothing to vod. You know, these are the bare minimum replays I could find, and this one's got me in it as well. I'm just so out of replays. You have to post them, guys. Um, so we've got uh, myself and Eclipse on decision in a Steel Talons mirror in this game here, and this is pretty good. This one. Now, that's why I've showcased it. I mean, that last game pretty interesting. Pimp showed us how powerful those flame tanks are, and really uh, worked worked over Julian something uh, chronic. Um, Eclipse is over here now. He's going to go dual barracks. He's going to send some scouts to the middle. He's going to send them straight up so he's not going for this structure. Obviously knows I can get there first. 